Hello, hi guys. Welcome to the Two Docs Podcast. I'm Dr. Ellie here. And I'm Dr. Inky. And generally, it's two doctors talking about a lot of non-medical stuff. That's correct. And we generally do our segments. Now we have a new style of doing whereby one of us will research a topic and we'll talk about it and we'll try to explain it as simple as possible. Next person can understand and you as a viewers can hopefully understand at the same wavelength. Of course, I try not to behave that he's a doctor. He also try <laughs> to behave that I'm not a doctor. We just call ourselves two dogs. Exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. All so, right. So now that COVID has kind of died down, yes. a lot of people are actually traveling again. Oh, the travel bug is crazy. Yes, yes, yes. 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 A lot of people are actually traveling in. But the thing is, we a lot of people kind of forgot how air travel works really because we haven't traveled in a long time. And there are new rules. Yes, there are rules which have been implemented during the COVID. COVID and post-COVID and it's not well publicized. That's right. That's right. You are right. And then sometimes the rules differ from country, country to country. country. Well. So the chances of someone missing a flight has gone up. Mm. And why this topic came out? Because I recently missed my flight. Mm. Twice. You miss a flight twice? On the same day. On the same day? How the, how the <laughs> heck do you miss your flight twice on the same day? So today, the topic is going to be five or maybe six secret tips on how to not miss your flight. I've got a whole bunch of it. All right, so what's tip number one? Tip number one, check your car tires. Check your car tires, okay. Check your car tires, especially if you are traveling. You are the one driving. If you are taking a grab, then this does not apply to you. But you can still check the, the, the grab first tires first before you go. Um, why? When I look at my car, my, I had a blowout. Okay. Uh, the whole tire just blew out and it's not flat. If it was a flat, no problem. But this one, the whole tire actually, the metal uh, mm. bits ripped off, just like how the, the truck drivers mm -hmm. um, yes. and, and the buses lose their tires. And the weird part is, from the outside until wherever you can see in the fender, mm -hmm. all looks perfect. Okay. It blew out from the inside. From the inside. It blew out from the inside and I had totally no idea. And after the whole ordeal and got into the workshop, I looked at the other side, the, the, the left side of the tire, and I, I noticed the inner part was worn out, but the outer part was perfect. Fine. So, Please, I know it's got nothing to do with the flight yet, but check your car tires because that's where the whole thing started. Actually, you are actually right because mm -hmm. I've more often than not, I've actually seen cars mm -hmm. um, break down on the way to the airport. Correct. Or back. Or back. And we see it a lot. Yes. There's only one way there. Yes. Two ways there anyway. Exactly. So you end up seeing a lot of cars along the roadside in, in, in car trouble. So if you are going to be in that situation, please make sure you check your car tires. Uh, number two, um, check-in times. Mm -hmm. Now, once upon a time, check-in time was 45 minutes. Yes. Okay. And then now the closing of your check-in counter is one hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to plan your journey ahead. Unfortunately, for that's why for some reason, if you're going for near flights, it's quite crazy to go to the airport. Mm -hmm. Your journey to the airport takes time and you have to check in an hour before. So a lot of people like to go and push it to the last minute. Sometimes that happens to me pushing it to the last moment and then speeding a little bit just to, uh, to make it mean. But please bear in mind, when the counter says we're closed. closing at 60 minutes before the flight, if you are one minute late, they are not going to open the counter. That's right. That's right. They're not going to right. open the counter. And I, I've, I've actually um, encountered as well mm -hmm. the gates closing early. Correct. That is the next one. So, Number three is... So first one, when I first, missed the yeah. flight was because of blowout. Okay. Then after that, I rebooked the flight for... from So from 9 a.m., it became a 12.20. All right. So the car tire took some time. In fact, it took so long, I said, I'm not going to wait anymore. So I said, that one, okay. Take a grab and I managed to get there. I checked in at 11.15. Which was how long before your flight? Supposed to fly off? 12.20 12 is the flight. Mm -hmm. So the cutoff for the, uh, the check-in counter, because I need to check in my bags, was 11.20. Okay. So I check in 11.15. Okay, so you still, so you I still made it, five minutes. So I have five, five minutes till the, the check-in counter closes. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Whole day, you know, I miss my breakfast and everything. I want to go and eat a bit. So I go and have a meal. I have a meal there. I said, ah, there's still some time to get to the gate. So I decided I will make it within the next 35 minutes. So 35 minutes before the flight, go there and usually I'm no 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 issue. Yep. Correct. Correct, right? Correct. I go there and you know before you cross into the security check and the immigration, there'll be uh, an officer that scans your your boarding pass. Correct. 
and it turns red. Mm. And it says, not access denied. You cannot actually go through the police first oh. round. So apparently now they close that gate, that security gate, about 45 minutes to an hour ahead mm. of your flight. Mm. So which means if you just check in ngam, ngam, on the boarding time, go past that, that, that security gate. Right? I understand, I understand. Don't go and have a McDonald's and decide that ah, I got 35 minutes, I can run, I'm young, I can just make it to the gate. Because that officer will tell you entry bar. So they tell me to do what? Go back to the counter and tell them that I'm coming in late and get an escort. Okay, get an escort. Get an escort. I mean, that's fine if you are in Malaysian Airlines and it was uh, their, their, their base and the counter is perpetually open. But if you're going on a different airline and the counter closes, yeah, it's difficult. Difficult. So there's no one to escort. Mm. And I so argue, you miss a flight. Huh? So I argue with them for a while. Try to justify it. And then in the end, the, the, the gate called and said, uh, Dr. Ellie, are you coming for your flight? Yes, but I'm stuck here. La la la. Another five minutes gone. They said, we'll give you five minutes to get to the gate. So I run for my life. But in uh, but the but the immigration counter allowed you to, to cross lah. Immigration doesn't care because it's auto gate. Okay, I understand. Mm. Security in the inner part doesn't care because it's just that don't don't carry fluids and, mm. and, and don't bring metal stuff on board. Mm-hmm. But that first barrier, which last time nobody really bothers that yes, much. Yes, correct. Now it's about forty five minutes to an hour before your flight. They're gonna bar your entry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New ruling. Yeah. So I actually had an experience as well. I was in. I was in Singapore, so mm. I was in Changi. So I I assumed that hey I can get a, I can get to my gate. So mm. I, I'm already in the airport already, okay. right? I'm in a duty free area, and I assume that hey I can get a, I can get to my gate half an hour before, right? It's plenty mm. of time. Yep. Anyway, I was flying from Singapore to to Kuala Lumpur, which is like a one hour flight. Ah. So I thought hey you no know, small short flight is fine. Mm. Then the next thing I knew, uh, it was roughly about half an hour before before the flight. Mm-hmm. Um, they were paging my name. Wow! All right, they're paging my name. I was like, famous. I was like, no, oh, something's wrong. Then I ran to the gate, and yeah. you know, you know, certain airports are like large, so yes. certain airports take a time to go there. Yep. So when I got there, they actually closed the gate already. They closed the gate. <laughs> closed the gate already. Yeah. So as I arrived, the guy was pulling the velvet rope thing, was uh-huh. closing. Then when I arrived, then he said, "Oh, you must be that that person, person we that we're paging." Yeah. They said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." They said, "Well." In the future, can you could you come, you know, and, and, and wait around here 45 minutes before the flight? Yeah. Because say according to Singapore Airlines, mm. our rule, mm. half an hour before the flight, we could we will close the gate. Mm. Close it completely. So did they let you go they, in? They, they let me go in. They they, nice. they let me enter because they, they were someone at, at the gate standing there. Mm. So and imagine, they just close it. They just close it. So imagine if the person was not there and was really completely closed, they might they would have denied me entry. Correct. So take take it seriously, mm. all right? So I also learned from this episode that if the flight is going to be on time, they are actually supposed to close the airplane doors 20 minutes before the flight time. So if they say the flight is at 7 p.m., at 6.40, they are supposed to close the airplane doors because they need another 20 minutes for taxiing and waiting before they fly at 7 sharp. Right, so gone are the days whereby they're a bit more flexible. Um, gone are the days where, you know, there's a lot of delay. If anything that, that you've been practicing delay, it's um, one of that that red color airplane flight. Mm-hmm. You know, you arrive there on time. It's it's quite quite often late. But recently, our transport minister uh, has issued a statement that he wants airlines to be responsible and answerable if they are late to take off. Ah, so it means that nowadays airlines will be even more strict, more strict to enforce this boarding rule. Time. Boarding time. So when they tell you please be at the gate and and doors close twenty minutes ahead, they're not joking. They're not joking. So, that's the next tip as well as what Dr. Inky said. Be at the gate at least about more than 30 minutes. Yeah. More than yeah, 30 just minutes. Hang on just hang on the gate. Play your game yeah. or do whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now everyone has access to a headphones. Just and sit there and play. Candy your... Crush, do whatever yeah. you want. Just sit there quite quiet and, and, and wait for the flight. Next one. Next tip. If you are having a connecting flight, do not book separate airlines. Oh, okay, interesting. Do not book separate airlines for the sake of trying to save some money. Mm. Usually, if you book within the same airline, yes, it will cost a little bit more. For example, if you want to fly to, let's say, Greece, there's no direct flight. So you need to book 
uh, KL to wherever and then the next flight will go there. So some people want to save money. So they said from here to here, the cheapest flight is this airline and from there to there, there's another airline. So let's book separate flights. I don't mind the extra hassle. If you want to do that, give yourself at least about 12 hours. Why? You need to factor in flight delay of yes, your current that's flight. Right. After you arrive there, you need to factor in because you're changing flights. That's right. So you need to actually check out and take your baggage and then you need to check back into the next flight. So you do not know what is the immigration time at each center. Like for example, in Thailand, the immigration itself can take one to one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of airports around the world, right? Mm. Um, especially at peak hours, mm. you can God, take two hours. Yeah, two to three two hours, to three three hours, hours just to clear just the to clear immigration. immigration. Yeah. And your bags will be all around the site then. Right. Which also means, let's say if you had a two hour delay and then you miss the check-in of the next flight, yeah. then you are gone. Yeah, gone. However, if you book within the same airline, A, you don't need to move anywhere. B, if flight A is delayed, yeah, they, they will, have no choice but to wait. They will, yeah, no, they would usually book you on the next, next flight. Next flight out. Or like in Malaysian Airlines, they would delay the next flight. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I, it happened to me whereby I was flying from Kuala Lumpur to Barcelona. Mm. So I booked through Malaysian Airlines. Okay. So of course, connecting flight because so I was flying from KL to London and London to Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So London to Barcelona was it's different flight. Was British Airlines? Okay. Was British Airlines, but however I booked it through Malaysian Airlines. So right. so, so I booked it on, on a single ticket. Right. So same thing happened to mm. me. What happened was the KL flight delayed. Mm. So by the time I arrived in London, because mm-hmm. The connecting flight was meant to be about two hours apart. Mm. When the moment I land, I had two hours to get to my connecting flight and then fly off. Mm. So I I I thought okay like within the two hours I get to eat a little bit of food mm. and all. But what happened was because we took off a little bit late, mm. about forty five minutes or an hour late. Mm-hmm. By the time I arrived in London mm-hmm. in Heathrow, London, I had only less than one hour to get to my connecting flight. Wow. And the problem was. The connecting flight was in a separate terminal. Wow. So the moment when I landed on the terminal, and for me to get to the next terminal, I need I need to go through immigration. Mm. So the immigration asked me, how come you're late for the flight? Well, it's not my fault, mm. you know, because the flight was was delayed, delayed on that side. So I needed to go look for a British airline slash Malaysian airline counter mm-hmm. to tell them to book me on the next available flight. Mm. Because my luggage, number one, my luggage would not make it in time. Because my luggage is still on the plane from KL. Yes. And it would not make it in time to the to, to the connecting flight. Yep. So luckily, mm. it was on the same airlines. Hence, they booked me on the next available flight, which was two hours away, mm. which is so lucky. But so, in your point, if I would have booked a separate flight mm-hmm. or another airline, mm-hmm. then I would have completely missed my flight. You would have completely and missed. And I would have burned have the, ticket, burn the ticket. I would buy a new ticket. Right. Probably at a more expensive price as well. And surprise, surprise. You know, if you book return tickets, you don't check in for the first one, your return is also burned. No, that's right. That's another that's thing right. that you have to please bear in mind. If you miss your flight, let's say you have a like, like in uh, Dr. Inky's case, KL London, KL is Malaysian Airlines. And then London, let's say London, yeah. Barcelona, London, let's say it wasn't British Airlines. Let's say it was uh, Sp- Spanish yeah. Air, right? He doesn't make that Spanish Air flight because he booked it separately. His return is also burned. He needs to rebook a whole new ticket all over again. So if you book through the same uh, single ticket uh, agency or not agency, but flight with their code sharing stuff, you are safe. They will do all the necessary for you. Next and final one. In case you got you missed it, the first flight, like me, oh no, missed the second flight, or missed the first flight, and you checked in your bags, and you got offloaded like me. <laughs> <laughs> I can, you know, when I got to the counter, right, I can see the airplane <laughs> already pushing back. <laughs> I just look at it, bye. <laughs> All right, so in case you got offloaded because you're late, like me, your next connecting flight please put it about four hours mm. away. Here's my next stress. So 12.20 was my flight and the next flight I put at 3.45, which gives me about three hours. Yep. When you get offloaded, your baggage does not follow you out that fast. Oh, okay. Hmm. It gets held somewhere. It gets held somewhere and because you are not coming in on a flight, you are not on priority for the baggage to come out. Number two, they will just leave it there for quite a while. And it's really not their fault because you know it's my fault who missed the flight. So it gets stuck somewhere and then someone needs to conveniently, once they finally realize, oh, this is an offload baggage or we need to send it to which counter. It took two hours for my baggage to come out. Yeah, so I think I've read about that before, mm. whereby when they offload baggage, mm. so 
it is actually a security concern when they're offering baggage. Yes, they need to scan it. Yes, they need to. So before they actually pass it back to you, they mm. need to undergo a very thorough security scan because in the past, long time ago, one of the tricks of all these terrorists was to check in the luggage, mm. put bombs inside, but mm. not appear on a plane. Mm. So now whenever they offload baggage, mm-hmm. luggage from the plane, they need to thoroughly scan it Correct. and probably have a supervisor sign off on it. Correct. And probably the supervisor is not around. Correct. Or just doesn't like the idea <laughs> that this bugger <laughs> yes, has yes. an offload baggage, I need yes. to do extra work. Yeah, exactly. So you want to rebook your flight, give yourself four to five hours for the next flight. Yes, your whole day is spoiled, but no choice because that was the next stress. 12.20 was when I missed my flight. My next flight is 3.45. Now, what time do I need to check in? 2.45. So from 12.20 to 2.45, I have two hours and my baggage took almost two hours. Again, I need to run back to the counter to check in all over again. It was a total stress. So don't do that to miss your flight. Now, the final bonus tip, how not to miss your flight. Mm-hmm. When you are going through the security check and uh, and someone is make, you know going through very long or there's some issues in front, do not say, I think he has a bomb. <laughs> Yeah, there are certain uh, words. Certain are, words you are not supposed are to say in the airport. It's banned. You will miss your flight. Correct, 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 correct. Not because of anything, but because your mouth was itchy. Yeah. So don't say things that would trigger yes. security concerns correct. at the airport. Otherwise, good luck to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so do be careful, even though it's a joke. Mm-hmm. You know, it's taken quite taken seriously. Taken very the seriously. So, so these are the things you don't joke around. You, you, you can joke at the hotel, but you mm. don't joke at the airplane. That's Nobody right. likes those kind of tiny, tiny jokes. And they have every right. Oh, yeah, they have every right, every to, right to, actually, su- to suspect. Yes. Even though you say, I'm just kidding. You cannot. Yes, they have every right to deny boarding. Correct. You also have to teach your kids not to say Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which also means you do not go and joke with your kids that there's bombs in the bags. That's right. Mm. Anyway, I hope you guys found this segment enlightening because it's true, very bitter experience. Now oh, I'm much wiser. And I hope I will be able to impart this to you guys so that you don't miss your damn flights. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what other things that we that other people should should do should or do know. Do. Uh, mm. do or don't or not do in order not to miss their flight. Until then, uh, signing off this week, Dr. Ali here on Two Docs. And Dr. Inky, have a good weekend. weekend.